Karan, it's great to see you and thank you very much uh, for joining me today. Thank you, Udayan, for inviting me. Great. As I was saying, when, when did that, this transition of Greaves Cotton start? Uh, because, uh, you know, you seem to have rediscovered yourself quite completely and that process is still underway. At what point did you tell yourself that I'm not just going to be a, a B2B diesel engine manufacturer, but I want to up my game and get into the e-mobility space in a big way? The journey began in 2016 uh, when we were discussing in the board and with the top management team how we could uh, repurpose the company and what we should do uh, you know, in order to achieve that. So I would say the journey began that year. Mm. What was the driving point? I mean, did you feel that you had to use your expertise to tap into the looming e-mobility revolution or was it a move towards becoming a more of a B2C company? What was the driving force behind this transition plan? Well, it was fairly clear to us uh, that, uh, you know, a only fossil fuel based solution for powertrains uh, was not going to be, uh, you know, <clears throat> sustainable for the longer term. And in our business, uh, you know, it takes time to sort of achieve uh, the position that we had achieved with the, the diesel powertrain, especially for in the low uh, light commercial vehicles, the three wheeler and the small four wheeler. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that the way f uh, for the future was electric and that's when we began discussing how to get into it. Uh, along the way, uh, once uh, we did take the plunge into uh, the electric uh, mobility area, uh, we decided that we should go in as a product rather than only as uh, the power train, which had been our expertise all along. Hmm. That's a significant shift because, you know, not many component manufacturers go on to become the brand themselves. Uh, but today what you're doing is this series of product launches that we're seeing from Greaves Cotton. There seems to be a complete realignment of purpose uh, that we are not going to be a component manufacturer for the end product which somebody else will make. Is it an easy transition to make to be from a component player to actually a finished product Vehicle manufacturer? It is not easy over there. Uh, it, uh, there are enormous challenges. And I think one of the key challenges uh, is getting the people, the management of a very old legacy business. You know, Greaves Cotton has been around for over 160 years. To get them to think uh, and act differently is a challenge. Mm. But you seem to have overcome the challenge by getting your current vice chairman, who has been very instrumental and key to your plans, right? Yes, uh, Nagesh is leading our vision, um, the board's vision for electric mobility. Um, he is very, uh, he has a very clear idea of uh, where we should be going, a lot of experience. But we must understand, uh, at least we do uh, at the board, that we are very uh, early in our journey and uh, there's a very long road ahead. Mm. That's an interesting point because, uh, you know, a lot of people do say that there is a lot of excitement about this electric vehicle game, but the legacy manufacturers almost scoff at it saying, you're too early into it. I mean, India is going to be a a fossil fuel destination for a very long time and this road towards uh, the transformation towards electric will take much longer than some of these electric vehicle manufacturers suggest. What's your answer to that? Market penetration of uh, electric vehicles uh, is definitely a challenge, no question about that. It's for two wheelers, it's currently hovering between 4 and 5 percent for four-wheelers and even for three-wheelers, it's quite negligible. So, yes, at today's, uh, uh, you know, scenario, it, 
it seems fairly insignificant. But I think that the world's investments into the entire area of electric mobility is now in the trillions of dollars. And a lot of that uh, work and money invested is revealing itself in ever-changing, more efficient uh, production of components, of batteries, of motors, of all the enablers for electric vehicles. So uh, it's just a matter of time when these become competitive on their own, in their own right. Uh, in several applications, the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle is already better than uh, that of uh, an IC engine, particularly in small payload applications. And, and this trend is going to continue. Mm. Now, when uh, electric vehicles reach a, uh, a much higher and significant uh, degree of uh, market penetration, those projections keep varying. I, I keep hearing all sorts of uh, uh, numbers and prediction. I don't have a particular crystal ball. I only clear that there is a particular direction in which the world is going and we are going to be part of that journey.